Hi and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's URC Round 5 preview and uh, things really starting to heat up ahead of the um, November Internationals because it's a massive opportunity for a lot of sides to establish a bit of early dominance and from the South African perspective, particularly the Lions and the Bulls, you can try and really start to climb the ladder and the log early on in this competition. The Lions currently sitting with 14, or both teams actually sitting with 14 out of a possible 15 points so far. The only team with a better scoring rate per match is Nenster, who sit with a perfect 20 out of 20. And Glasgow Warriors taking on a Shark side, which includes all the Springboks, such as Sia Khaleesi, Eben Etzebeth, uh, Aprilia Fassi, Lacanya, uh, Matsuma Pimpi, the works. So very likely, potentially, well, not likely because it's the Sharks, but Glasgow Warriors have a tough game ahead of them. And with Lions taking on Zebra, who's a team that they fancy beating, the Bulls taking on Scarlets tonight in a few hours, we could very well see both the Lions and the, and the, and the, the Bulls being in the top three by the end of this weekend. So very cool. Uh, potential log by the end of the weekend if the results go in the right way. Before we look at some of the teams, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let's start with looking at the log. And uh, that is where the log currently stands. Leicester on top and a massive weekend. Uh, you can't even actually show them. Uh, Stormers, yeah, you can just see the Stormers there um, with five points. The Sharks with six. They both only got a single victory. But very importantly, they are at home this weekend. If we look at the Bulls, this is the side that Jake White has named and a couple of big names. And Hendrik Vessel starting at Loosehead. Not a position he's played a lot at the Bulls. We've also got um, um, Buddha Chambers starting at 10. Obviously, Kirtley Arantzer, no Vili Leroux, no, um, and no Creel, despite the fact that he was uh, cleared for this weekend. He will not be starting. So it is a Harold Forster, Kenny Moody midfield combination. And also no start once again for Pilo Gamede, who remains on the bench. Not entirely sure what's going on here. But uh, it's not a bad side named by, by Jake White. I do think it can get better. Uh, front row-wise, it's very exciting. It's, it's three players who could all probably be in the box squad. Akafana Merba, I think if he were to have a really strong season, could get himself back in the mix. But Andrew Vessels is in the mix. Vilko Lowe, we know, is in the mix as well. Um, no uh, Albert Lowe or Ruin Nokia, but Cameron Harnacombe, Big game ahead for him. I think Zach Berger, I'd like to see a bit more from this season. And uh, we continue to see what Kenny Moody can do at 13. Uh, for Scarlett, a couple of players to watch out for. Owen Lloyd's a nice player to watch. He's very fun to watch. Uh, Ryan Elias at, at 2 is always a good player. Tame Plumtree at, at 8 is probably one of the main ones to watch, really, for this the Scarlet side. Uh, if we move on to Saturday, we've got Lions versus Zebra. And the Lions have released... A backline to decimate uh, a, a zebra side, and this is what it looks like. So, from the pack point of view, maybe not the strongest front row. A couple of rotations there. Juan Skuma getting an opportunity, uh, coming out from Fury, and those two not having too many starts. Ruben Skuma around North Mark was pretty straightforward. Jared Kane's coming off the back of a man of the match performance, playing on the flank to accommodate Franco Horn, who's obviously back in the mix with the URC. But look at that backline. It is Phenomenal. Morne van der Berg, Sinead in the Humba, Edward van der Merwe, Mario Slow, Henk van Beek, Richard Creel back, and Quine Horde. The only two players in that entire backline who have not been involved in a Springbok camp or in a Springbok squad or capped are Mario Slow and Richard Creel. And Mario Slow was in great form last season. So it's a backline that's first of all attacking stacked. You know, Sinead in the Humba, any, any backline which has Sinead in the Humba in a 10 shows the sort of the, the kind of intent. Uh, Henkel van Beek gets his first start, I think almost of the year, really, since that knee injury, a recurring knee injury. Very excited to see how he goes. Speaking of good teams, look at the shark side. Front row, Oxen Chair, Bongi Minambi, Vincent Koch, Evan Etzbeth. Four box before you get to Miel van Heerden. And just as you get away from box cut players, you go into Sia Khaleesi, Emmanuel Tuka, Pepsi Butelezi. Just two players in that pack who are not cat for the spring box. And I think Emmanuel Tuka, had he had his papers, would have been part of a box squad by now. It does not stop there. In the back line, just one non-capped player, and that is Edwin Cater. So in a starting 15, you have got 12 capped Springboks. It is absolutely... Sorry, I'll take it back. You've got 30 capped... No, 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 the 12 capped Springboks. Uh, so if you look at the back line, the Hendrickses start together for the first time at 9 and 10. You then got Maximum Pimpi, Edwin Cater, Aprilia Fassi in the back three, and uh, Andre Estes next to Lacanya. Um, I mean... 
That could be a Springboks center pairing, nobody would blink. That could be one of the best international pairings in world rugby if on, on their day. I mean, it's it's insane. And just because you thought maybe they might need a few more reinforcements, Trevor Nicarney off the bench, Springbok capped, Ru Andre off the bench, Springbok capped, Jason Jenkins, Grant Williams, Sia Masuku, Irenja Julius. This is the shark side that we expect to see challenging for URCs and the likes. For Glasgow, well, plenty of, of international talent there. Serena Tupolotto starting at 12, one of my favorite players to watch. Watch out for this back three of Matt Ferguson, Rory Dodge, Jack Dempsey. They are prolific and uh, they can cause problems. But I do think uh, even with George Horn, Tom Jordan's a nice halfback pairing. I think then there you've got to think that the shark side's got too much uh, for Glasgow. And then finally, Munster versus Storm. Storm is back in Cape Town. Uh, starting, it is Steve Satori, Joe Stueber, Neating for sheer. Nice front row, backed up by RJ Smith and J.D. Schickling. So a nice big boy, especially with having Rivers and him coming off the bench there. And uh, Moss Tinson, Ben Jackson, Dixon, and Kiki Marabe continues to notch up some appearances. Damien Vilimsa continues at 10. Not sure about the decision, but, you know, Yuri Mateer coming back from injury. I do think we might see him at 10 from next week. Damien Vilimsa maybe moving back into that number 12 jersey. Um, but plenty of experience in the likes of uh, Ruan Nell, Warwick Lance at fullback, uh, was trying a lot of things last weekend in a very hapless Stormers performance. So they've got to bounce back, and I think that he will be a big part of that. Those are some of the main fixtures. If we look at the fixtures over the weekend, Ulster versus Ospreys, you've also got Edinburgh versus Cardiff, Connacht versus Leinster, and Dragons versus Benetton. That's Sharks, Glasgow, you've got to think it's probably, well, these two, probably the games of the weekend. Quarter to four tomorrow as well as 6 p.m. Make sure you're locked in the channel. We will have a couple of watch-alongs and some reactions as well as news as it comes in. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you guys all very soon.